Hi, in this video, we are going to look at a question from the 2014 HSC Software Design and Development Exam. This is question 28. It's an algorithm problem and it's worth three marks. So here's the question. The following algorithm is intended to store the results of the times tables of the numbers one through to six in the array product. The algorithm has logic errors. So here we have the algorithm. The algorithm begins here. We have a variable um, called row, which is storing a value of one. We have a while loop that has a condition while row is less than six. And then inside that while loop, we have a for loop. Uh, so we have a for loop um, that runs in every iteration of the while loop. The for loop is going to run six times. So we have four column equals one to six. And in each iteration of the for loop, it's going to run this line of code here product row comma row equals column multiplied by column. So basically we have a, a while loop that's meant to run six times and in every iteration of um, the while loop it's going to run a for loop six times. And the while loop is meant to go through each row and the for loop is meant to go through each column of each row. So the expected content of the array product is shown below. So this is what it should look like we have a two-dimensional array um, storing rows in each row array we have a whole heap of columns this is how we could kind of visualize it and this is what it should look like if the algorithm was working correctly so for example one times one equals one one times two equals two one times three equals three and so on two times two equals four two times three equals six two times four equals eight and so on and three times two equals six three times three equals nine and so on. So basically where each row and each column intersect, uh, we're going to have the result of that um, row multiplied by the column. So it's gonna display all of the times tables from one to six. Um, however, there are some logic errors. So going back to this algorithm again, uh, you might be able to spot a few issues. Um, and the first issue is to do with this while loop. We have a condition here. We have while row is less than six. So what actually happens is when the row counter, when that row variable gets up to six, this while loop is no longer going to run because this condition will evaluate to false. While row is less than six, um, it, it's not gonna run this while loop if the row a variable is equal to six, it has to be less than six. So what that actually means is the entire um, last, that last row, the sixth row, is going to be skipped or completely ignored. And then you might also spot another problem here, which is that the row variable never actually changes. So it's actually always going to be stuck on row one. We have row equals one up here, but nowhere in the while loop um, do we actually increase that row variable, that counter that's going to go through each row. So that's a little bit of a problem too. And then we have a look at the for loop. The for loop itself is set up fine, but the statement inside that for loop, which is going to um, run, it's going to be run for every single column in every single row, that is actually incorrect. So we're trying to access the product array. We're actually trying to access an element in, um, inside um, we're trying to access each column of each row but we're using row twice here we're saying product row row um, and so basically it's always just going to go through um, that very first element row is equal to one and here we have row again so that's equal to one so what it's going to be doing is updating product one comma one so that's the very first item to be equal to column multiplied by column. And that's another problem there. We should actually be multiplying the column by the row. So it's not going through each row on each column. It's a big problem, All right? What it should actually be doing is going through um, each row. And then every time it goes through a row, it's gonna go through each column. So it should be going through row one. And in row one, it should be doing row one, column one, and then row one, column two, and then row one, column three, and so on. And then in the next iteration of the while loop, row should update to two. So it's going through row two, uh, column one, row two, column two, 
row two, column three, and so on. And that's not happening. And also, even if that was happening, we're not actually multiplying the row by the column. We're multiplying the column by the column. So let's have a look at the sample answer for this algorithm problem. And then let's also look at an alternative solution. So here we have the, on the right hand side, we have a, a sample answer um, for this HSC question. So we'll begin our algorithm here and we'll use that row variable again. We'll set that to one. We'll initialize that variable to have a value of one. And we'll use the while loop again for this example. But what we need to do is we need to fix this con condition here. Instead of having while row is less than six, we should have while row is less than or equal to six. And it would also work if we wrote uh, while row is less than seven, but it makes more sense to have while row is less than or equal to six. And then inside that while loop, we can have the for loop. So we can say for uh, column equals one, two, six. Um, but inside that for loop, we need to correct that statement. So we access the product array. And we access each row and then also each column. And you can see I'm using square brackets here, which is pretty normal for arrays. Um, but in the algorithm shown, there's actually just normal brackets used there. So um, you can use normal brackets, but here I'm just using square brackets just to make it clear that that's an array. And then that's going to be equal to column multiplied by row. Right now we need to say next column. So that that for loop moves on to the next iteration and increases that column counter variable. Uh, and then also what we need to do is make sure that we increase the row variable. So that's something that's missing from here at the, the end of the while loop, um, that row variables is never changing from one. So what we can do is just say row equals row plus one. And then we just end that while loop. and we can end the whole algorithm. Now it doesn't actually say anywhere that we need to display the contents after that, so that's fine. That's uh, a working solution. And this is actually the sample answer provided um, for this question. However, let's look at an alternative solution. Let's um, maybe make this code a little bit more efficient, clean it up a little bit by instead of using a, um, a while loop and then a for loop within that while loop, why not just use two for loops? So we'll just end that algorithm there and we'll have a go at another solution. So we'll begin. Oops. And straight away, we can just create a for loop. We don't need to create a row variable because we can use the built-in counter variable for a for loop to represent um, each row. So what we can do is just say for row equals one to six. And then below that line, make sure we indent, we can create the for loop within this for loop for each column. So we can say for column equals one to six product row comma column equals column multiplied by row. Let's clean that up a bit. Okay, and then we just need to make sure we say next column and then next row. And that's it. Okay, so this algorithm is going to work the same way. Um, it's going to go through each row and for each row, it's going to go through each column. But instead of using a while loop and a for loop, um, we're using a for loop within another for loop. 
All right, and because for loops have a built-in uh, counter variable um, that automatically increases in each iteration of the loop, we have next column, next row. Um, because we have that, we're not going to accidentally forget to increase that row variable or to increase a, a column var variable if, if we were using a, a while loop. So it'd be necessary in a while loop to, to do that. But with a for loop, um, we don't need to we don't need to write row equals row plus one or column equals column plus one because of that built-in counter that increments. Uh, so that's good. And also we don't need to create that row variable to begin with. It's just built in included in the for loop. All right, so that's an alternative solution, which will also work, but it just looks a little bit cleaner um, and just a, a better algorithm.